Now you were bringing up something about an iPhone. You were talking. You're you're showing me something about some kind of foldable iPhone thing. Here. <sighs> okay, so so when I first saw this, I was like, the release date of Apple's first foldable iPhone might have just been released, and I'm like, okay, is this coming out soon? So then I started reading more down. It says the rumor has been reported and we might see it by 2023. And I'm like, man, that's like 2023 still sounds like so far away. But it's not like we're already technically. What? Almost a quarter into 2021. We still got about two more years, but it's going to be interesting when I when this comes out, because I have a couple. So here, I'm going to read through some of the reported rumored specs and then we'll we'll kind of discuss uh, the market or where, where, where I kind of see this fitting in. Um, so it says that the handset will be reported featured a 7.3 to a 7.6 inch OLED display and have some kind of stylus. Um, now those, those pictures that we have up on the screen right now, if you're watching the video, uh, these are just rumors. It may not even look anything like that. It could fold a completely different way. Um, a lot of times these rumors come out in regards to patents that are being filed. So a lot of people online will will dish up some rumored specs and, and render it across. A recent report said that Apple is testing several foldable iPhone concepts, exactly what I was just saying, um, indicating that the launch could be still several years away. And I think that's why they're speculating 2023. Um, you know, I kind of wanted to bring bring this this up and, and see what your thoughts on on it was. Do you remember when tablets were first a thing? And they started off at a, as a seven inch screen. Mm -hmm. They were literally a seven inch screen. The bezels were like an inch thick all the way around them. And now we have phones like the note because you use a note, right? Yeah. And the notes, a pretty big screen. We're looking at almost a seven inch screen on the note. Are we not? Yeah. So we are getting to the point where, you know, the phones that we have as a regular are the size of tablets that um that that we were using when tablets first came out do you remember when this when samsung came out with the mega there was a huge phone that samsung came out with and they called it a mega but it wasn't like a, a top tier phone it was like a seven inch phone and that's when they started dubbing the word phablets and these phones were like in between phones and tablets but i'm kind of curious to see are we going to start seeing more of a transition where we where we transition to more foldable phones that we get bigger screens in our hands but smaller form factors in our pocket and we start to transition more to things like Chromebooks because what what we we just we we drop the 7 and the 8 inch tablets and then we go to 10 and 12 inches but we add the form factors for a keyboard and stuff like that and we kind of take more of a mobility on the go uh, of having a computer with us. And then our media consumption is done on our phablets that are going to be seven to eight inches on a foldable screen. But how successful have has these foldable phones have been? Because I don't like everywhere I go, mm -hmm. I don't see anybody with a foldable phone. I so think I saw one person. I saw one person on YouTube say like oh yeah look check this out like my foldable phone and then he puts it right down to his other phone he's like yeah you know i have this every now and then i carry it but i normally use the other phone but it's kind of like like the flip phone the flip phone died years ago years and years and years ago like who the hell has got a flip phone nowadays it's like saying like look guys i, I have my palm pilot it's like really <laughs> i got one of those and it, to me it seems like okay it's a cool idea mm -hmm. to have the actual glass fold mm -hmm. but who actually has one and has it really been successful like like you know i'm like just looking at this thing samsung was the first one to do it and well, there's a mainstream yeah well samsung is at according to this samsung is at at the forefront of foldable phone development yeah. right now yeah. And then Hawaii and Motorola are, are trailing. Hawaii. <laughs> Huawei, Hawaii, Hawaii, Huawei, Huawei. What did I, what did I say? Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> I just saw that. And I just looked, I'm like, that looks like the word Hawaii. <laughs> you may need to have you check for dyslexia. there. <laughs> I need to go to Hawaii is what I need to do. <laughs> but okay. So I'm, I'm going to throw something at you and see what you say. Hawaii. 
<laughs> I'm not throwing Hawaii at you. You're not getting a trip from this episode. Damn it. <laughs> well, maybe the next episode, so stay tuned. No, I'm joking. <laughs> stay tuned. Guaranteed. <laughs> Prior, I mean, I don't want to admit this either, but I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there. Prior to AirPods, were people spending that kind of money on wireless earbuds? On, on an average. I think that, so the reason I'm asking this, and I'll kind of explain it because I'm sure that you'll debate it or you'll have something to say about it, but Apple is really good at something. They're really good at getting people to spend more money than they would have on a product in the past, right? And, and you'll see that foldable phones, yes, Samsung is leading the forefront with it now, but the reason we don't see more people with it in its pocket is because it's over $2,000. The people who do own the Fold 2 love it. We've talked to Digital Slang. He loves it. The people who actually own it love it, but it's not mainstream yet. And some reason, Apple has this marketing power that they can take things that are really expensive and tell everybody that they need it in their pocket. Okay. When did the AirPods come out? Oh, man. I don't know. Long time ago. <laughs> if you're going to ask me a question about AirPods and not know of when they, when they came out, I have to know when so that way I can compare it. 2016. Okay, so in 2016, I'm trying to think where I was at. Was I? At the, I think I was. I was working at the hospital. I was using wireless headsets, headsets, not earbuds, headsets, and I was probably using wireless headsets since 2000 and maybe 10 or 11. Not earbuds, because earbuds, I don't think they had any wireless earbuds yet, but but wireless headsets. Okay. Um, I know they had Beats. They had um, Takashime. There's some Japanese ones. Mm -hmm. um, they had several several different ones. And I remember the first ones that I used was a Japanese brand. Um, it was a Jap. And you know what? I, I actually, I have it right here. Like one of the first... <laughs> Like, dude, I, I kept I kept buying this brand because this is the first brand, uh, Nakamichi. Mm -hmm. Wireless, th this not 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 this one in my hands, but this brand was the very first wireless headset that I bought way the hell back then, and they were great. When I I so for those of you that don't know, I used to be a uh, musician. I used to teach music. I used to I used to tour the states a lot, actually. Um, I would normally, I would typically take off like around May or June and not come back until August, sometimes September. Like I would later I was gone and that was the headset that I used everywhere that I went. Um, when I was writing music or, you know, when I was just performing or whatever, those were the headsets that I used. So I was I was kind of, and you know what? All the musicians that I had also with me um, were using some kind of wireless headset. When the earbuds came out, um, remember my, and I, I talked to Digital Slang and Hefe about this. Um, I've always said I've never been able to find a good earbud that fits my ear unless it goes around the ear right. and it hangs onto it. That was because of the AirPods. When right. the AirPods first came out, I tried it and those things were just popping out. Right. Everybody that I've known that says they hate earbuds that they just stick in there is because of the AirPods because they don't just fit. They pop out. And it wasn't until I would say last year when, when I started getting these, these headsets that were coming in, these, these earbuds, I'm just like, Oh wow. I'm like, okay, the, the the rubber around the the bud matters it depends on 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 how you put it in and like all kinds of stuff so i started getting into the different types so i don't know with the airpods okay but 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 understand the question though so after 2016 we started seeing everybody with these little white sticks in their ears right and though i didn't i didn't buy them but a lot of people did. Did. it was like, i didn't see everybody it was a lot of people that I saw in my area. I don't. I know. saw everybody with Beats. That's who I saw. Okay, well, Beats too. Let's say Beats too, because they ended up buying out Beats. But Not AirPods. 
when they launched these, they were $159. And Beats were around the same price, if not more expensive. Prior to Beats and prior to the iPods or AirPods, AirPods, people that I knew and even myself, I wasn't spending $160 on a pair of headphones. Nah, that wasn't me. I wasn't putting that, that kind of money in. But now we're looking at them releasing their new AirPod Max for $500. And people are going nuts. People were never that nuts about audio and headphones years ago. For some reason, Apple has this way of dropping over. I'm, I hate to say overpriced because I'm not trying to devalue their company at all. As much as I disagree with some of their stuff, I'm not going to try to be mean. I'm not going to be uh, Mark Zuckerberg right now. But <laughs> they're overpriced. <laughs> Screw Apple. <laughs> but they have a way of, of, of setting a certain price and making it a standard, right? I, I don't think that if the AirPods could price themselves at $160 or $250, that Samsung would have such an easy way of coming in and pricing their buds at similar prices off the bat for some reason. I just don't think that Samsung has the same marketing power that Apple does in the current state. I mean, I like sample, sam, sample, Samsung better than Apple, but so there's just a difference when it comes to the Apple ecosystem, the Apple customers, and marketing. I think there's a, a difference between the two companies when it comes to that. Yeah. Well, they each their own, I guess, right? Okay. 